Think different. These two simple words changed how the world would use and appreciate all types of technology and media forever. Two simple words. This was the theme of a man named Stephen Paul Jobs. He had a vision and nothing was going to stop him. When we look at the history of Steve Jobs and connect his dots, we find his life demonstrates one of an influential leader that left a colossal legacy. Jobs was a college dropout because he was bored and not challenged. He needed to think different, and he had new visionary ideas that would later create an amazing legacy. In 1976, Jobs and his good friend Steve Wozniak, better known as Woz, started building circuit boards in Steve's parents' garage. An Apple computer was born. Just three short years later, in 1980, Apple Computer goes public with a net worth of over $200 million. In 1983, Time Magazine names the computer Machine of the Year after watching Steve and his team create the Mac the year before. Well, to create a new standard, it takes something that's not just a little bit different. It takes something that's really new and really captures people's imagination. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. Steve's vision and leadership proves to be extremely successful. To continue its growth, Steve brings on Pepsi CEO John Skelly. One year later, their thoughts of the company direction began to diverge. Scully f was focused simply on profits, but Steve's creativity and need to develop great products remained his top priority. Apple's products are popular because they're simple, they're elegant, they're easy to use. But it all started from Steve Jobs asking that one question, what can we remove? Apple's board of directors sided with Scully, and Jobs found himself fired from the company he had built from just his ideas of possibilities. This was quite a blow to Steve Jobs. Jobs was devastated about how he could be removed from the company he built. First, he felt lost, but he soon realized that he still loved what he did. Looking back, Jobs was about to enter a pivotal time in his leadership life. I'm convinced that the only thing that kept me going was that I loved what I did. You've got to find what you love. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. Steve finds himself starting over again with an entire world of opportunities in front of him. In 1985, Jobs started a company called Next that focused on a new operating system. However, the next operating system was not compatible with other computers, and it had a hard time competing. Steve agreed to develop an operating system that was more compatible. In 1992, the renamed Next Software partnered with IBM and Intel to have it put on their platforms. Next would go on to develop the fastest operating system in the industry, known as OS X. Steve's massive influence and leadership in the industry would impact the world even when he was not a part of Apple. After this success, Jobs met with some friends who introduced him to a company that brings together computer animation, technology, and creativity. Bringing art and technology together had always excited Jobs. He purchased the company by becoming the majority shareholder. That company became Pixar. Pixar went on to create the world's first computer animated feature film, Toy Story, and is now the most successful animation studio in the world. Incorporated Magazine named Jobs Entrepreneur of the Decade in April 1989. In 1995, because of Steve Jobs' leadership, Pixar's Toy Story became the first commercial computer animated feature to hit theaters. Toy Story earned 192 million dollars at the box office. Uh, from the way I see it, I mean, Apple was a company that was based on innovation. When I left Apple 10 years ago, we, we were 10 years ahead of anybody else. The problem was is that, that Apple stood still. The output has not been there, and people have caught up with it, and its differentiation has, has eroded. I think the way out is not to slash and burn, it's to innovate. 
That's how Apple got to its glory, and I think that's how Apple could return to it. Apple needed to strengthen its place in the industry and was looking for a new operating system to buy. Apple purchased Next on December 20th, 1996 for $429 million and 1.5 million shares of Apple stock. Apple's management also realized that Steve's leadership was the missing link, and it was key to have him back as a leader of the company. In July 1997, Jobs was named CEO of Apple and back where he belonged. His return took Apple back to its core values, keep it simple and straightforward. In 1997, Steve launches his legendary Think Different campaign to show the world that people with passion can and do change the world. Jobs said, it's the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones that actually do. This, Steve believed, was the core value of what Apple was built upon from its inception. And by returning to its basic values, it brought Apple back to be the industry leader it once was. Apple was back on track and it was all due to Steve Jobs and the return of his original vision. Steve was now back in the business of making products simpler and quicker. In October 2001, Steve introduced the revolutionary iPod music player. It was the first device of its kind to be able to hold 1,000 songs in your pocket. Kerry Sherman, president of the Record Industry Association of America, says, Since just about everybody feels that within a decade, almost everybody will get their music from such places, is very big. Of course, other products will come along and try to copy the device. But she says, at the moment, iPod is the category. He was a very great leader. In fact, he had an impact on babies because babies are now able, are now accustomed to, you know, sliding the screen. And when they were given a magazine, the babies could not obviously turn the page because they're used to sliding the screen and a lot of babies were crying. So he has absolutely changed our way of life. I am a mother of a new college student and the connectivity that I can have when he's in school, a thousand miles away through FaceTime, has really bridged the foundation and relationships between families. His vision of Apple and what it was supposed to be um, was what I believe um, a computer should be. You know, he, he really believed in computers being user-friendly. Um, I think what Steve Jobs is always going to be known for is the fact that he demanded a computer that was simple. The iPod uh, it revolutionized music. Ooh, you, you watch a jogger jogging down the road, or a bicyclist, or just somebody walking, you know, I'd say there's 8 out of 10 are going to have an iPod. You know, he didn't want a complex thing that a regular person um, couldn't use. So that's why he, throughout his career and life, he always strived to make his computers user-friendly and... Um, Simple. Apple will live on, and it will be Steve Jobs' legacy. In the final days of Steve's life, Walter Isaacson had a conversation with him about what he hoped his legacy would be. From the only authorized biography, Jobs shared his thoughts, saying, My passion has been to build an enduring company where people were motivated to make great products. I hate it when people call themselves entrepreneurs when they're unwilling to do the work it takes to build a real company. That's how you really make a contribution and add to the legacy of those who went before. You build a company that will stand for something a generation or two from now. That's what I want Apple.